I was addicted to a drug. I overused this drug. I abused this drug. I restricted this drug, and I deprived myself from it. My entire life was ruined by this drug. It ruined my career, my relationships, and it distanced me from the closest people in my life. It was the easiest drug to hide. It's socially acceptable. You can buy it pretty much anywhere. And no one really questions you when you're using it. What drug am I talking about? Food. Food was my drug of choice. I used food as a way to escape when I did not have the courage and power to deal with the emotions that I was feeling. I grew up as a child actress, a stunt double, and a dancer. So when I wasn't on a stage or in front of the camera, I, that's basically all I did. And so my body was constantly under a microscope. When I was 18 years old, I quit dancing and stopped acting. And it was in that moment that I became ruthlessly obsessed with my relationship with food and my body. Every single calorie that passed through my lips was recorded. In my purse, I carried around a food scale, I had a calorie counting app, and a food journal, so every calorie was accounted for. I hated looking in mirrors. Food absolutely terrified me, and I distanced myself from my friends because I did not want to go to social engagements and have to fight food. My body was the enemy. I hated my body. I shamed it. I said horrible things to it every single day. My entire life, from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed, was in a constant state of stress, anxiety, and fear. I was living from a place of fear, day after day after day. I went for a walk with a girlfriend of mine in London, England, where I used to live. And mid-conversation, she turns to me and she says, Sam, I know you used to be an actress, but you're really not kidding anybody. We all know what you're going through. And it was in that moment when my palms got sweaty, my heart started to beat, my face was inflamed, and I turned to her and I said, you're right, I'm really struggling. It was in that moment that I knew I needed to change the trajectory of my life before I completely ruined it. So I went home that day and I sat on my couch with a cup of tea and I just said, God, universe, someone, just give me a sign. I just need to figure out how to stop suffering and stop living this lie and stop sneaking food and stop hiding and stop restricting and binging and restricting. I just want out of this battle that I got myself into. So I asked the universe for a hunch, a sign, give me something. And a week later, I received a letter. And the letter said that I was getting deported from England, which, by the way, happens if you oversee your welcome by a year. <laughs> Go figure. So I moved back to Canada with one intention in mind, and that was to heal the relationship I had to food and to my body. Day after day after day, I spent really trying to connect and I kept hitting resistance after resistance after resistance. And this whole thing called an intuition that apparently we have, I convinced myself I did not have. I convinced myself that there was no way I could use food for health and hunger and feel good in my body. So after a lot of resistance, I decided to hire a coach. He told me to do this weird thing called meditation, and that's going to help. And after I fought him... For weeks and weeks and weeks, I decided, okay, fine, I'll sit in a dark room by myself and just feel. And I did. And I did it week after week, month after month, and I still felt nothing. 
After a few months, I felt a glimmer of release. I felt into my body for the first time the one thing I was running away from and battling for years and years. And I just broke down and I cried and I realized what that feeling was. You see, the weight loss industry does an incredible job telling us that we're not good enough, we're not skinny enough, we're not whatever enough. And I fell so deep into this trap. Week after week after week, I was on a different diet, looking outside of myself to try and make myself feel full. They're putting Band-Aids on bullet wounds and not actually addressing the emotional reason as to why women are overwhelmed and overweight. In order to release the physical weight you're carrying, you must look at the emotional weight you're carrying. And this is what I failed to do. So I kept myself in this diet binge, diet binge cycle for years and years and years of my life and did not have the courage to speak up because of the shame and the guilt and the fear. I'm creating a world where food is used for health, hunger, and enjoyment when we decide. I'm creating a world where the number on the scale does not tell us how worthy we are that day. I'm creating a world where beautiful is a feeling, not a size. It pains me to speak to hundreds, literally hundreds of women every single month who tell me that they've been going through this their entire life and they've not told anybody. When shame is spoken, you can begin to heal. And when you start to heal, you transform your life and the lives of those around you. It's time to integrate head and heart, mind and body to work as one cohesive unit to guide our human experience and not be at, in a fight and in a battle with ourselves. You deserve to feel at home in your body, love in your body. If any of the words that I'm speaking on this stage are resonating with you on some level, I invite you to just get out of your own way and speak up and share. Come have a conversation with me. It could be the one conversation that changes the trajectory of your life. Thank you.